Have you ever picked up your insulated bottle, felt the warmth of your coffee still trapped inside hours later, and wondered why this simple everyday item is called a thermos? We say the word so casually, thermos mug, thermos flask, thermos bottle, that it almost feels like a common noun for anything that keeps drinks hot or cold. But behind that familiar name lies a surprisingly rich history involving scientific breakthroughs, clever marketing, and even a legal battle that changed how language works. Today, we're diving into the fascinating origin of the word thermos and how it evolved from a brand name into the universal label we all use today. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. To understand the name, we first have to travel back to the late 1800s, during a period of rapid scientific advancement. Physics, chemistry, and engineering were transforming everyday life, and one of the big areas of curiosity was the study of heat, how it travels, how it's stored, and how it can be controlled. In 1892, a Scottish scientist named Sir James Dewar built a new kind of container while studying the behavior of extremely cold gases. His goal wasn't to keep coffee hot, it was to keep liquid gases like oxygen and hydrogen cold. Dewar created a double-walled glass vessel with a vacuum between the walls. With almost no air inside, there was almost no way for heat to transfer in or out. It was a groundbreaking invention for scientific research and it would later become the basis for something found in millions of households around the world. Duar's invention was known as the Duar flask, not the thermos. In fact, Duar never patented his idea. To him, the flask was just a scientific tool, not a commercial product. But as with many scientific breakthroughs, someone else saw its potential for everyday use. In the early 1900s, two German glassblowers, Reinhold Berger and Albert Aschenbrenner, recognized that Duar's vacuum-insulated design could be marketed to the public. They improved the flask's durability, added protective casing, and created a consumer-friendly product. But they needed a name, something memorable, something that suggested the ability to hold heat. So in 1904, after holding a naming contest, the winning suggestion was thermos, derived from the Greek word thermi, meaning heat. It was a brilliant choice, short, catchy, scientific sounding, and easy to pronounce across languages. The thermos brand was officially registered, and soon the thermos bottle company was born. They began mass producing these insulated containers, and for the first time, Regular people could keep beverages hot or cold for long periods. It was revolutionary. Workers could bring heated soup to the factory floor. Travelers could keep drinks warm during winter journeys. Students could pack cold milk for lunch. The Thermos brand became synonymous with modern convenience and the new on-the-go lifestyle emerging in the early 20th century. As the thermos bottle gained popularity around the world, something interesting happened. People stopped calling it a vacuum flask and simply called every brand of insulated container a thermos. It didn't matter who manufactured it. The word became generic in everyday speech. This kind of thing happens more often than you might think. Words like escalator, yo-yo, zipper, aspirin, and even dumpster were all originally trademarks before the public adopted them so widely that they lost their brand protection. That phenomenon is known as genericization, and the thermos company fought to protect their brand name from exactly that fate. In the 1930s, the company took legal action in the United States, trying to preserve the exclusive rights to the name. They argued that thermos still referred to their specific brand, not just any vacuum bottle. But the courts disagreed, 
saying that the public had already adopted thermos as the generic term. The company could still print thermos on their products, but they no longer owned the word exclusively in the U.S. It was a major turning point in trademark law and a reminder of how powerful everyday language can be. When millions of people start using a term in the same casual way, it becomes part of the culture, regardless of who coined it. Even though the word became generic in the United States, the company continued to innovate, expanding into food jars, travel mugs, lunch kits, and stainless steel bottles. Over the decades, Thermos has become more than just a product name. It symbolizes reliability, durability, and the simple pleasure of taking something warm or refreshing with you wherever you go. Today, the technology inside modern insulated bottles, whether they're made by Thermos, Stanley, Hydro Flask, or any other brand, still traces back to Dewar's scientific breakthrough more than a century ago. The vacuum insulation principle remains the same. Block heat transfer, trap temperature, and maintain freshness. So why is it called a thermos? Because a century ago, a company wanted a name that captured the power of heat. And in doing so, they created a word that outgrew their brand and became part of everyday language. It's a story that blends science, marketing, design, and the way people reshape words simply by using them. Every time you twist open your insulated bottle, you're not just taking a sip, you're touching a piece of scientific history and linguistic evolution. The next time someone asks you what a thermos really is, you can tell them it's more than just a container. It's a brilliant idea born in a laboratory, adopted by innovators named after heat itself and embraced by the world. And that simple word, thermos, is a reminder of how inventions can travel from science to society, shaping both our daily habits and the language we use. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.